Hello, welcome. In this episode, we're going to be going over solutions to the Dirac equation. So just to remind you, the Dirac equation looks like this. I del slash minus M F being on the state equals zero. Where del slash is just a gamma matrix multiplied by the derivative at each spatial point. And there's a gamma matrix for each um, direction of space time. So for example, the time component of the, the gamma matrix is just, it's a four by four matrix. And in this section, two by two is zero. This section, we have the identity matrix, the identity matrix and zero. Whereas in the x direction, actually we could just say x, y, and z. We have zero, the poly spin matrix, in whichever direction this, uh, this gamma matrix is pointed, I could denote by subscript i minus the matrix, the poly matrix, and voila. So, I could also rewrite the Dirac equation just as I being mu del mu minus m. Now, the momentum operator is just I del mu, p mu, p mu. That's just I d by dt, the gradient. So now we could rewrite this in the form gamma matrix p mu minus m. All right, so we want to find the solution. So let's see what this looks like when we expand it. So expanding it, we get the, the time component of the momentum. Which is just the energy minus P m0, 0, 0, m. And this is going to be acting on what's known as a Dirac spinner. And it's the four column matrix. And we can represent the upper two columns with psi L, lower two columns with psi R. And these are, you know, obviously two by, or two, the two column matrix two element column matrix, and these are called while spinners. And they're different than vectors, they have different properties, as we'll see. So we're gonna see what we mean by the left and the right. So this is L, right, see what we mean by it. So going down, we could say, expand this out, we have M, P zero minus del P, P0 plus sigma P, and that's minus M. So now what we end up getting is we get P0 minus sigma P by R. Um, and we just change the sign for the left moving one by R. Now let's just say this is a, this particle has no mass, it's massless. 
we just set this side equal to zero. So therefore, we could say phi r have this relation and then for this relation. So now we're going to see what the what I mean by left and right moving. So we're going to find this operator, it's called the helicy. So when we act this on a right moving wave function, the eigenvalue is plus one, which means that the direction of its spin and the momentum are parallel, so they're aligned, so they're you know, it's, the spin is pointing the same direction when it's moving. And then for the left moving, or the, the left handed wave function, it's minus one, which means it's anti aligned. Now, using these gamma matrices, we could show another way to get that for massless particles, and that's called the, the chirality. So we can define gamma five, I, one, two, three, four. This is called <laughs> this is called the chirality. I'm doing, I'm making a video. Oh my god! I don't want to be in a video. Okay, well it's it's too late for that. Um. So this is a. Uh, Trality operator, and what we get is minus one, zero. So now we're going to act this on the, the state, the direct spinner, and then what we get is we just get whether it's right handed or like, you know, we get negative one for it being anti parallel. And then plus one for it being parallel. Now, for massless particles, the chirality and the helicity are the same. But if we have mass, then that means that we could it has to go slower than the speed of light. So we could define a reference frame in which um, so you know at rest you might see the particle spin align with its momentum. But then once you are accelerating faster than that particle, then you'll see its momentum going the other way. And then it will become anti-aligned. So um, the spin is different than the chirality, but um, for massless particles, they're the same. So what do I want? I want to... So, so anyway, we could also define, uh, if we want to just get the left-handed wave and the right-handed wave, we could define a projection operator E equals one minus gamma for the the left. Let's see. Yep, because if we act this on this state, then we get this one comes out to be two over two um, left hand operation. So if we act this on the state. You just get the left hand wave function and then the projection operator for the right hand is one. Okay, so this is how we could just pull out the right handed or the left handed wave function from this state. So we also want to see that this has the, uh, the relativistic dispersion relation. So I was just about to erase this, but I could still have it. So we have 5p so we're going to use this expression. To show that So we could rewrite this, you know, we could divide this side, we could say phi L, 
or the hook. So the left, the left hand wave function is just M by R. And then we could just substitute this into here. So that will give us P0 minus R. which just gives us P0 squared squared equals M squared. And then that's just the relativistic dispersion relation. And then we just say E P squared. So now what we get we could just divide both sides, square root both sides, and this is the plus or minus. So now we also have another set of solutions to the Dirac equation that correspond to minus P naught or for massless particles we could just say this is zero. And since these have negative energy, these are known as antiparticles. Which we derived back in um, another video that I took. So, yeah, I'll make another video on particular solutions to antiparticles. So, yeah, stay tuned. These are, so the, the time derivative of the momentum, you could either think of it as going a uh, regular particle going backwards in time or an antiparticle. Since antiparticles have positive energy, we could just say these are negative frequency more than negative energy and energy states. So we'll get into this next time. Yep, thank you and subscribe, peace and space time. You know what's good. Yeah.